Well, my name is John Griffith and I'm an alpine climbing photographer based out in Chamonix in France. My name is Jeremy Jones. I'm a professional snowboarder that um, made a couple uh, films the last six years exclusively based on foot-powered snowboarding. All right, I'm Angie Payne. I'm a professional climber based out of Boulder, Colorado. My primary discipline is bouldering, but I've also gone on a few bigger adventure trips with Mike Lebecki and some photographers. Well, I can say when, when we're making the films, we really consider the, the act of leaving camp, climbing up, snowboarding back down. We have an agenda that we have to keep. Everything is timed. The cameramen know how long it takes them to get to their camera angles. And we consider it that we're basically shooting wildlife, meaning there's no like calling on the radio going, hey, stop for a sec, we want to, um, you know, reshoot this sketchy part. It's like we go and do our act and the cameras are in positions to just spray it down. And it's probably similar to climbing where you have that ability of like, you can't go and pull the crux three times. Um, it's like you get it or you don't, I would assume. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I'm not a filmmaker, but being on the other side of the camera, on the trips, it's more about keeping the camera rolling all the time. Because right. if you're doing something, and this is the same for you, I'm sure, if you're doing something, you're not gonna go back down and repeat it on a trip when you're doing like a first ascent or something. Right. It's not yeah. like, oh yeah, let's get that sequence again on that tower that we right. climbed. And But there are, there are other aspects of climbing where it is a lot about, it's it's pretty repeatable in certain, is, yeah. in certain Right. Because we're not moving on. Like you sort of, yeah. by the time they thought, I want to reshoot that, you're 100 meters back down the slope. Yeah. So, well, yeah, climbing, you've one taken go. two steps forward, and it's like, oh, can you just like, hey, head back? Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Very rarely on a trip has somebody said, hey, can you go back and do that again? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Just right. does, it doesn't and probably, really like, the more so. real it gets, the less, and the more risky it gets, the less it turns into this kind of studio scenario where you're like, hey, take another step. Yeah. And, and we'll do that where we will, when we aren't like on the mission doing the real deal stuff, be like, hey, we need to shoot some close-ups of some feet. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Can, don't tell anyone, but we will match that with <laughs> don't, toss don't up the in the gnar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't tell the 12 cameras that, but uh, <laughs> there is some liberties there. I think it's important to have the risk in what we're doing. Because if you have like a climber who's like totally in his comfort zone and he's just like, you know, by a lift station or something like that, then the guy just stands around like a proud stag. Yeah. You know, he's just like, oh, this is beautiful. And you're like posing, you know, just basically posing down the whole time. Right. But to me, that's like photography and filmmaking from like 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. Like I really want to capture guys like shitting themselves. Yeah, you know? and the eyes. And, yeah, and the eyes. the eyes. And to do yeah. that, you have to put them like really out of the, yeah. Out of that comfort zone, right? Which is tough because it means that you have to get yourself into that zone as well because you've got to shoot it. Jesus Christ. This is unbearable. Fuck! But I think that's, I mean, that's my passion in my work is to shoot people, yeah, just yeah. really pushing themselves. Um, and you can't fake that because no. we're not actors, we're just you climbers. Can't repeat it either. Yeah, 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 yeah. We really value that kind of ledge on the side of the mountain where maybe it's like a handy cam, like shaky deal, but it is that extremely re real raw moment yeah. mixed with the glory, you know, well-produced shot and, and value that kind of shaky moment of realness just as much as that kind of glory, um, beautiful shot. You keep getting all these amazing like helicopter, it's basically right. ski porn shots and we're like, yep. wow. But you need to get that like wide angle guy on the ridge and you're like, holy oh, shit, he's gonna go down there. Right. And the only way to do that is to get that kind of shaky, gritty right. kind of footage, right? I mean, yeah. you know more than me, I never shot that stuff, but you Yeah, no, I mean, we, um, it's kind of, it's one of those things like, if you're in that point where you're like suffering, where the last thing you wanna do is pull out a camera or you're so scared and the last thing you wanna do is pull out a camera, that's the time to pull out a camera. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. I'm so glad I don't have to do that. I'm glad I'm not the one pulling out the camera to film yeah. the bad stuff, but I've been on the other side of it and wanted to throw the camera off the side of the wall because 
It's yeah. like the last thing you want is a camera in your face. But like you said, when you watch the film right. later, you're like, that's, yeah. it's a good thing you had the camera on, even though you wanted to kill the, the filmmaker at the time. Like, sure. Please put the camera yeah, away. Yeah. Don't and film this. Uh, yeah. It's the best stuff. You see, yeah, something I've also learned along that way is like, we'll have these trips where we don't have success and it is the total beat down and you come back and everyone's defeated and you hand over the footage and you're like, there's nothing there, we're total failure. And the editors get it and they're like, this is the best stuff. Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves to see people fail. Totally. <laughs> it's very relatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I really enjoy pushing, like I said, my athletes. It often gets me in trouble with them and they don't speak to me for years afterwards. <laughs> but it's like, you kind of have to do that. Yeah. And like you said earlier, that makes the story. Right. Like no one wants to see people constantly smiling and having fun. We want to see people really scared out of their elements. And it does annoy the athletes for sure, because sometimes they're just like, get the goddamn camera out of right. my face. But you're like, hey, it's my job and we're here to do this. I mean, and then like you said, when you come back, and everyone's, That's everyone's calmed down, yeah. and then you look through the footage, and they're sitting there watching it, and there's a big grin on their face, like, actually, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah. you know? And then you suddenly got yourself a film all of a sudden. <laughs> and that person who, like, is totally kind of come unglued on film, usually when that movie comes out, that person is so relatable that, you know, the audience loves that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> We want to see chinks in your armor. That yeah. That makes us love you. And I, I mean, I feel like if you're making a film, you owe it to the audience to put it all out there. And it's, it's terrifying. I mean, my friend summed it up best. He's like, you know, making a film. It's like walking out into this audience with your clothes off. Like, I mean, you have to show who you are inside or the film is not going to resonate with people. Yeah. But that, and that's why when you're on the other side of the camera, it's hard to, when you see that camera come out and you're right. the most vulnerable you've ever been. I mean, this film that just <clears throat> played at um, Pumaka, it's the most vulnerable I've ever been on a trip. I just, I can't do it anymore. In a cave, tired, done, wanting to be like at home. And Andy pulled the camera out. And I did, I said, don't, like, just put it away. Right. And he didn't because he's smart. Yeah. Uh, he's good at what he does and and I hate I was upset about that right. and everything else and just ranting about how horrible it all was. Like, and then you watch it later and and how it's did it, it, it's like I'm I thank Andy all the time like <laughs> I'm nice. so glad you filmed that. That's <laughs> that's great cuz it's just a good reminder too. It's more rewarding that way because you can remember and there's actual footage of like, wow, I was in a really bad place there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, right. and we still got out of there, so that was good. I think like a kid coming up today, I mean, the good news is the barrier to entry from 20 years ago where you needed film cameras and your editing system cost $30,000. I mean, there's no barrier to entry. What the, but now you are in this, there, there's so much uh, stuff out there to kind of rise above the noise requires uh, a new take, being creative. Uh, you have to kind of do your homework and get educated on proper filmmaking. And um, the, again, the good news is the courses are free. The cameras don't cost that much. The editing stuff doesn't cost that much but you gotta put a ton of effort in to rise yeah. above the noise. I mean, I think being with an athlete is, that's my biggest advice to photographers or filmmakers or cameramen, yeah. is you gotta find yourself the athlete. Like, right. because everyone's got an Instagram account that's been like hyper photoshopped. I mean, it all just merges into one like massive sunset after a while, right? right? <laughs> so like, but if you can be like, you know, the cameraman to like Judy Steck or, yeah. you know, to you in your industry, I mean, that, there's no better seal of approval because right. the top athletes, they get to choose exactly who, who yep. they work with because everyone will work with a top athlete. Right. So if you are that chosen one, that's like the ultimate seal of approval. And a bit like you said, if you can find the next generation and become their eyes, you know, their yep. photographer, then... But it's tricky, then you've got to gamble on who the next guy is going to be. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I'd say to the kids too, it's like... The, it's do less things and do them really well. And it, it's like, instead of releasing that clip on edit, five you need to you know give it eight more passes on the thing and get a bunch of opinions and really put a lot of attention and 
to make something truly special. And it, it takes less money now than it ever has in the world, but it, your stuff needs to be better than it's yeah. ever had to be. My biggest advice when people ask me about sort of becoming a photographer is just like, forget about the photography, just go climbing. Yeah. And the same for snowboarding. It's like totally. you could be the world's best photographer, but if, if the snowboarder can't keep up with you, yeah. then what the hell's the point, right? And the same in climbing. It's like when I go and do a photo shoot, I'm like, I always, you know, I see my route and I'm like, I want to be up there for sunrise. That's going to be my sunrise shot, you know? But that means that I have to know the timings, how we're going to get yeah. there. Everything has to fit together. That, and that's down to my climbing ability. Same for like if I want to go shoot Yuli, like I've got to actually climb with the guy. Right. Um, and that's the most important thing, because if, right. if he's like 200 meters above you the whole entire climb, like, this, like, it doesn't matter how good a photographer you are, you kind of didn't get right. the shot right. So you're better off working on the skills in the mountains to be able to keep up with the top athletes and maybe not getting the very best shot. But I mean, totally. it's better to get a shot on an iPhone than not get a shot at all, right? Yeah. But I mean, that's just years and years of dedication in the right. sport as well. So you, yeah, you have to be a master of everything. It is it is quite complicated. As an athlete, my advice is, I, I sort of, found myself in the situation. Never, It was never a life path that I planned out. I think it's different than a lot of the kids coming up nowadays that decide they want to be professional when they're like 11. I mean, right. I just started climbing when I was 11. I don't, right, didn't even yeah. know there was that you could do anything with climbing. But nowadays, my advice then would be to say yes. Yes. Take yeah, the opportunities yeah. when yeah, they say come. Say yes when you're a kid. When the incredible opportunity yeah, presents yeah, yeah. itself. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Jones, and he's right there. Bryce, I'm 100%. Copy that. Give her heaven, buddy. So bloody close. <laughs> it's almost like I could chuck a, chuck a cricket ball at it. It is a kilometer away. I know, but it looks close. How far can you throw a cricket ball? <laughs> Not that far. Must <laughs> be very good at cricket. Nice. We made it to the top. That's really, really scared to come. <laughs>